All right, welcome. Good morning. It's uh, about four miles, four and a half miles into my hike this morning. Uh, this is a short trip and another eight miles. I'll be in Perrysburg, a left woods hole shelter, or woods hole hostel. Amazing place. Uh, Neville has amazing, just peaceful, serene, all organic. Uh, very, very, uh, very refreshing. And uh, it was a great experience. And, and uh, you know, I, a couple of my friends got off trail yesterday. Grits and Twist got off trail and, uh, and so did Bayou and, 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 you know, they had the reasons and they're comfortable with the reasons. And, and I've said it from the beginning, like if I ever get to the point to where like, you know, I'm not enjoying this or it's not bringing value to my life, then, you know, I'm gonna be like Forrest Gump and just be like, I'm tired now. I think I'll go home and, uh, and go home. But, you know, so I wish them well and, and, uh, This is uh, this is a lot like life, you know. Everybody, I, I know I'm showing all the good sides of of what happened here, but uh, of what I'm doing here and all the fun and 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 you know doing backflips off waterfalls and uh, you know dancing in the streets to, to things and smiling and all the beautiful flowers in the trail. But you know, life is adversity, and and whether you're out here or you're at home, like. Uh, or especially in the recovery setting, I'm, I'm very, first of all, let me say this, I'm very grateful for all the new subscribers and the comments. Uh, uh, I got tremendous views on the tornado video, which is, you know, which is kind of funny to me because, uh, um, you know, that's just, that's just human nature. People want to see a, a train wreck, right? They, and, uh, and out of all the videos I do, that's the one that gets the most views and it's, and it's super cool. And, uh, the one you spend the least amount of time on and it just happens. And I say that all the time, like the most amazing experiences in my life, it just happened. And I've had absolutely nothing to do with them except for being there. And, uh, um, you know, and, and, but really the self-reflection one that I did, uh, about recovery and, and six years, uh, powerful, powerful people, you know, messages come in and, and contacted me and, and, um, you know, that's the real purpose for me being out here is to try to show people that you can be happy or content in any situation, even under extreme um, adversity. And, and uh, you know, I'm having the time of my life out here, but I kind of have the time of my life anywhere. And, and, and uh, it's a struggle out here, man, just like in life, right? It's really easy to say like, well, I wish I could go do that. And, and, you know, I didn't have to go to work every day and, you know, but it doesn't matter if I'm working. It doesn't matter if I'm out here. I am responsible for the way I perceive and see things. And uh, so I just thought it was cool, it'd be cool to go over just some of the adversity I've faced out here. And, uh, you know, so I came out here clueless. I didn't even walk around the block. I, um, um, I had no idea what I'm doing. I'd never been in the mountains before and, um, uh, never had a backpack or packed up my gear. And, and immediately I left my night core in the rental car or, or at home actually. And I left my, uh, seat cushion in the rental car. So I roll into town. I had to scramble to find a, uh, a, a, a headlamp and night core is a headlamp. I'm sorry. And, uh, for the dark out here so I could see in the dark. I, so I was just stumbling around, clueless. Uh, I hiked eight miles the first day, uh, all downhill, and uh, and had to take a day of rest on day two, you know, because my body wasn't accustomed. And, and now I'm cranking out 15, 18, 26 and a half miles. And, uh, and it's just an amazing ride. Um, if you weren't here earlier and when I first started, I had a cough for the first month and, and I hiked with bronchitis and, and I found out I have a nodule on my lung that I need to get looked at. Um, I broke two trekking poles. I lost my spoon out here and, uh, twisted my ankle at mile 150. I'm almost a mile 650. So it's been five, almost 500 miles. I've been 
in agonizing pain, like every step, you know, and uh, in the Smokies, I got my phone absolutely soaked and cost me $600 in town to get it fixed. And I was without power and in a torrential downpour and, and I ran out of food in the Smokies and had to run up Klingman's Dome in a complete blizzard without any way to communicate with anybody if I got injured or hurt on a bad ankle and uh, and got up there and my shuttle driver didn't show up and it was a complete 50 mile an hour winds uh, white out blizzard and and uh, somebody hitchhiked me into town and and then I survived a tornado man a tornado. But the next two days later, I am uh, back flipping off a waterfall. And, and you know, like, I, I think one of the lies that we tell ourselves is that we deserve to be happy or that happiness is, is uh, achievable out there somewhere. And, and, uh, and especially in recovery, a lot of people come into recovery and people, I, I get it, people try to tell people just how happy they are and and that they found recovery and and life is still life and there's adversity everywhere you're at and 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 i you know our book doesn't in, in our recovery book it doesn't say anything about being happy zero it says trudging the road to happy destiny right it's a grind it is it is uh not seeking happiness but being okay in any situation um it's okay to just be okay and and uh you know, one of the biggest things about recovery is, and anybody who's suffering, we live in such guilt and shame, and guilt and shame are the lowest forms of consciousness out there, and and it's why so many people are angry. When I see an angry person today, I don't, I don't see them as being angry, right? Um, so the lowest forms of consciousness are guilt and shame, and then just above that is anger. So. So if you're living in guilt and shame, when you lash out in anger, and this is a study, and I can't remember who it is or who did it. I'm out here on the trail and I can't really look it up. But when you lash out in anger, you're actually moving up the consciousness scale. And, uh, and it makes you temporarily feel better. But then what happens is when the, when the anger is over, you resort back to guilt and shame because you were angry. And, and it's just such a perpetual cycle that... that people think that they're going to be happy if if they just do this or if they do that and no thing no place no situation can provide for me happiness because i'm already i already have everything that i need and and it's it's just doing what is right in front of me and there's this there's a zen proverb that says uh uh before spiritual awakening chop wood carry water after spiritual awakening chop wood carry water Life doesn't change, man. Life is already perfect. Life is life. We change. And I try to live my life, and I tell this to a lot of people, is life isn't good or bad. Life isn't fair or unfair. It isn't um, going to be better around the horizon because it's already perfectly designed. It's a perfect choreography, and so are you. So am I. We are perfect. There's nothing to fix. There is, there is nothing to um, improve, <laughs> right? How can you improve what is already perfect and what is perfectly designed with the universe or God or source is created perfectly? Um, we, well, for me, what I had to do was learn how to be in neutral and not judge anything anymore. Not judge a day as a good day or a bad day. A day is just a day. It's not good or bad. <laughs> Uh, it's just a day. The sun comes up on Monday, the same as it does on Saturday. Yet we celebrate Saturdays and we curse Mondays. And and uh, the trail is a beautiful place because, uh, you know, it helps me to talk to myself. I know that sounds crazy, but I self-reflect a lot and I'm always asking the questions. Why am I uncomfortable with this? Why is, why am I begrudgingly, you know, grimacing or cursing going uphill and hi.
How are you? Good. How's your hike? Excellent. Such a nice day. Yep. And good it, terrain. It turned out great, huh? Yeah. I'm going to see you up there. Yeah. And I don't know where I was at, but um, days aren't good or bad. And, and uh, I talk to myself out here and I tell myself when I'm struggling, because I still struggle in life, right? I still be like, ah, oh, another climb and it's this many feet and it's this long and... And I'm tired and, and I just have to remind myself that it's just a climb. Chop wood, carry water. Um, yeah, I, I had, I hiked with Glitch and Twitch for a little bit yesterday and, and I, you know, and I, I told them like, there's no judgment when you know your time is done, your time is done and, and that's okay. It's okay. There is no trophy. <laughs> And I'm I, well. When, when this is over, guess what? There's another journey, and everybody out here, it's there is eight billion people in the world, eight billion little universes on their own journey, man. And uh, and out here, I don't know how many there are. Two thousand people out here, a thousand people. 50, I don't even know. Everybody has a story. Everybody's on a journey, whether they think they are or not. And and for me, I, I realized a long time ago that doesn't matter if I'm on the trail or if I'm at home or if I'm at work or if my nature, my condition nature, my human nature is I'm fundamentally dissatisfied. It's like, I can't wait for the weekend. Then I can do what I want to do or, or I can't wait for this experience. If I go home, I already know I'm going to be like, ah, I wish I stayed on the trail. And, and the, sometimes on the trail, I'm like, ah, it would be nice to be home and see my grandkids and hug on them little guys and my dog, right? No thing, no thing is ever going to fulfill me or satisfy me. And once you know that, you can let go of things or I can let go of things and, and just remind myself that it's perfect right where it's at and and uh and i made some friends for life out here and I, I'm, I'm happy for glitch and twitch and and uh on their journey because their journey continues whether you're on the trail or not right and when this is over there's just another journey and every day is just another journey there's just another step there's another chop wood and carry water there's another adversity there's more to overcome and uh Life is beautiful, man. May not be happy all the time, but it's perfectly synchronized. It's a dance, man, and and I just want to dance. So, welcome to all the new subscribers, and I appreciate you guys. And and uh, I'm gonna keep trekking north, man, because uh, I'm gonna chop wood and carry water. Appreciate you.
pulsing. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Trees down everywhere. Makes it hard to get through when you're holding your phone one hand, trekker poles in the other hand. You see that tree? All over the place today. Blocking the trail. I imagine it's from a tornado that we had, even though this is a good ways up, they still had a lot of winds, apparently. But almost to Perrysburg, I don't know, maybe less than a mile, 
me and my friends at the Dairy Queen. Um, about 13 miles so far. Something like that. Not sure. Been a little rough down hills with the, uh, the ankles have been feeling pretty good. And well, we haven't had any real rocky terrain today and or lately. And uh, I scraped my foot on a rock or something, as you can see. It went right through my brand new shoes. My third pair already. Less than 650 miles. I just got these shoes. I switched to Topos, which I'm not a huge fan of right now. The Ultras, uh, I thought they would work better maybe with my ankle and tried something different. Uh, but they're a little snug and I've gotten a few blisters and I haven't had any blisters until I switched to these shoes. So, you know, uh, maybe it's a little more secure on my ankle. I don't know. I twisted my right ankle today. It fell once, ripped my shoe. So uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the shoes. I think it has to do with my big footed, clumsy walking style. Um, and of course, the terrain doesn't help when you got big rhododendron roots and rocks everywhere unavoidable but I'm still moving just slow down a little bit and I have to check my foot when I get there uh, both my feet actually oh no did it blow down Assuming I'm going to go up here. This is where it's dangerous because this is not level terrain. Huh. It's probably a six foot drop. Back on trail. Absolutely beautiful. Walking into Perrysburg. Perry, Perrysburg. P E A R I S B U R G. Perrysburg. Look at that. And I was up there. I was up there. What a gorgeous day.
Yep. Car. Oh, yeah. There's a courtship. Yeah, that's a courtship. <laughs>